Giving your heart to Jesus is a topic which connects to the question, have you given your heart to Jesus? Have I given my heart to Jesus? Is this a valid question for each of us today? Or is it just something meant for spiritual people, for priests, nuns, or people in the consecrated life, or pastors, ministers of the word, missionaries? In this session, we'll be talking about why it's valid for each and every Christian irrespective of the person's status in life, irrespective of the person's spiritual growth, level of spirituality, whether or not he's spiritually inclined or not. As a Catholic, as a Christian of any type, it is important to say yes to this question with confidence. It is important that we have this desire to be intimate with the Lord and to confidently say, yes, I'm a sinner. I need God's grace. I need God's help. But I have given my heart to the Lord. I have given my heart to Jesus. So in this session, I'm going to share a few points and much of it was written in this article, Giving Your Heart to Jesus, published in 2017. And I'm going to throw in a few more points as well. The concern is, there are many deceptions which we may tend to fall into. All of us are operating on a level of reasoning, on a, on a, on a basis of human logic and our understanding, which we many times don't realize that it's very limited. And the ways of God are far higher than the ways that we can imagine. And it's very, very easy to fall into a deceptive mindset. Many of us may think or assume that we've already given our hearts to Jesus. The question is, has it really happened? Is it a living reality in our lives? This is not a topic of anything external, but something spiritual, something deep in our heart. This is what is indicated in Romans 2. True circumcision of the heart is something spiritual. Is this happening in our lives? If not, how can we desire it to happen? Why should it happen? Uh, perhaps we should realize the need to give ourselves to the Lord completely and fully in the course of the spiritual journey. Complete surrender is essential to experience God's love and mercies. So we all know the gospel story that Jesus came. He was born on this earth and then he died. He was uh, crucified, of course, and he shed his blood on the cross. And after that, he was buried and then he rose from the dead, following which he ascended into heaven. But the story doesn't end there. This was followed by the descent of the Holy Spirit. This Holy Spirit is given to each of us as a precious gift of God. It is God Himself. He is God Himself who's come into our hearts. And uh, when we celebrate the Holy Mass, the first opening line of the priest is, the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Are we experiencing the fellowship of the Holy Spirit? Are we experiencing the communion of the Holy Spirit? Being perfect, being sinless is not a criteria for us to do this. Jesus came to reach out to us sinners in the level that we are in. Now the question is, can we give our hearts to him completely and fully? So here are a few points. Uh, we may call it uh, deceptions, concerns, or just, just points to think about what it means to give our hearts to Jesus. And it will also help us to understand what giving our hearts to Jesus is not, so that we don't fall into an assumption that may not be a living reality in our lives. There is a concept, O-S-A-S, -S, once saved, always saved. This is nothing but a deception. Many of us in the past may have had deep spiritual encounters, tangible, authentic spiritual experiences with the Lord in the renewal, a change of heart, a change of life. Baptisms of the Holy Spirit, unforgettable situations, which have changed the course of our lives forever. But this does not necessarily mean that we are going to go all the way to heaven. We need to cling to the Lord. And the Lord himself tells us in Matthew chapter 7 that it's the narrow path that leads to eternal life. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. That's from Hebrews 12. And it's only those who persevere till the end who will be saved. So at any point of time in our spiritual journey, if we fall short of this, we need to look into ourselves and ask ourselves this question. Are we still connected to the true vine, which is the Lord Jesus himself? John chapter 15 talks about branches which are connected to the true vine, Jesus himself. But later, these branches which do not bear fruit are cut off and thrown into the fire. And uh, those branches which are once united to him, those people, those souls, who were once united to him, close to the Lord, would end up in a state of being separated from the Lord for all eternity. And he also gives us two options in Luke 13, either repent or perish. We need to look into ourselves and ask ourselves, where are our lives heading? If we are going to assume that we are going to heaven, this automatically brings in a lukewarm nature into our discipleship, an assumption which may turn wrong, and we may end up in a place which we never ever thought possible.
Proverbs 24 talks about the righteous man who sins seven times a day. And if this keeps continuing throughout our lives, we may be committing sins which we really do not know. How do we expect to get into heaven if there's no repentance, if these sins are not cleansed, if we don't allow Jesus to touch us and heal us in an ongoing way, which should happen throughout our lives? And this is what may lead to our eternal salvation. So all our spiritual experiences in the past and even in the present and all our good works and whatever good may be happening now as an experience of His grace and His love and His mercy is not proof that we will enter into heaven, though it is always good to cling to the Lord and have this hope of eternal life. There is another deception which many of us may easily fall into. That it's only priests or nuns, people in the consecrated life, missionaries, pastors, who are called to give their lives to the Lord. This is far from true. Each and every one of us have a soul within us. And the soul is created for God, by God and for God. It's St. Augustine who tells us, My soul is restless until it rests in God. God created each and every soul irrespective of its vocation, irrespective of its state of life, to be with Him in union. And by virtue of our baptism, we are imbibed into the family of God. Each and every person, each and every soul on this earth is created by God and for God and created to spend time with God for all eternity. It doesn't matter whether you're a priest, nun, some religious person, consecrated person, single, married. It just does not matter at this point of time. The point is, you have a soul within you and this soul has to be united with the love of God, united with Christ Himself. And this bears fruit for all eternity. And giving your heart to Jesus is just part of this process. It's like the foundation on which this relationship with God takes shape and gets built. I remember asking somebody this question. Have you given your heart to Jesus? This was over a decade ago. His response was a little weird, very weird. He said, yes, I go to church and I pray to God. And I asked, I asked him the same question again. He repeated the same answer. Have you given your heart to Jesus? Yes, I go to church and I pray to God. There's a terrible, terrible contradiction here. There's a terrible misunderstanding of what it means to give your heart to Jesus. And many of us feel challenged by this question. Many of us feel intimidated by this question, which should not be the case. Have you given your heart to Jesus? Should be a question which every one of us should be comfortable with. As a disciple of Christ, we should say yes. Or we should say yes, I want to give my heart to Jesus. I'm in the process of giving my heart to Jesus. But if you're feeling intimidated, if you're feeling uh, challenged by this question, there could be something wrong with our discipleship. We need to reach a state in our spiritual lives where we are actually very, very, very comfortable with this question. Not only in asking the question, but also in, in receiving the question. We need to say, yes, I have given my life to Jesus. I have given my heart to Jesus. Or we need to be in a position at least to say, yeah, I want to give my heart to Jesus. I'm in the process. I'm seeking God's grace and God's help. And one day I hope to give my heart to Jesus. We need to be comfortable in talking about this. And this is what takes our discipleship forward and helps the kingdom of God to grow. I asked the same question, have you given your heart to Jesus, to somebody else over a decade ago? And she replied, I did not think about it. And there was the inquisitiveness in her. What does this actually mean? Now many of us may fall into this category. Have you not thought about it? Have we not proactively decided to give our lives to Him completely and fully? If not, it's never too late. We need to start thinking about it. This is a foundational aspect of Christian discipleship. It's foundational in the sense that even when we go for Holy Mass or pray the Rosary, we need to give our hearts to Jesus in surrender and say, Lord, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Everything I have is from you. Everything I have is yours. Lord, show me the way. Have your way, Lord. Let us think about it. If we don't think about giving our hearts to Jesus now, there may come a time where we are unable to think about it in the future and it may be too late. We may be like those foolish virgins in Matthew chapter 25 who were unprepared when the bridegroom came to visit them. And I'm referring now to the day of our death, which could happen anytime, today, tomorrow, 
are we ready to meet the lord are we ready to meet god the loving father and be in his presence to invite jesus into our hearts helps us in this preparation as a very very important process and to invite jesus into our hearts is a very very important step to help us in this preparation to meet with our end and to move into eternity